not. <laughs> there we go. That good? I think that's good. Book of Genesis, chapter 22. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering, and arose, and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey, I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went both of them together. And Isaac said to his father Abraham, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went both of them together. When they came to the place of which God had told them, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order, in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and, he, and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram, caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, The Lord Will Provide, as it is, as it is said to this day, From the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you. And I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall, put, shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in your, offer, in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his young men, and they arose and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham lived at Beersheba. Now after these things it was told to Abraham, Behold, Milcah also has borne children to your brother Nahor, Boaz his firstborn, Boaz his brother, Kemuel the father of Aram, Chesed, Hazo, Pildash, Jidlef, and Bethuel. Bethuel fathered Rebekah. These eight Milka bore to Nahor, Abraham's brother. Moreover, his concubine, whose name was Ruma, bore Teba, Geham, Tahash, and Maka. So, a very, uh, a very telling chapter, right? Here we see that Abraham is being asked to sacrifice his son Isaac, which God had blessed him with in the previous chapter. But we also get to see a sort of mirroring of the coming of Christ. We get to see the sacrifice of Jesus being foretold here. In verse 2, take your son, your only son. God gave us his only son. God gave us Jesus and Abraham was about to give God Isaac. Offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Again, another pre-telling of the sacrifice of Christ. Another thing I really want to point out is wood is involved in this burnt offering. And wood is what Christ was crucified on. Now I'm going to get into like my regular notes because that was just something that stuck out to me when I was reading through that and I really wanted to mention it because I do have in my notes again another 
mirroring of the crucifixion of Christ. But that like little part at the beginning, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. That just really stuck out to me. So the first note I have is on verse one. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. We have seen just how dedicated Abraham is to the Lord. We see just how obedient he is in all of the previous chapters. And here we get to see God test that obedience. We get to see God test Abraham's faithfulness. In verse 8, Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went both so they went both of them together. This literally does happen in verse 13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram. God has provided Abraham a lamb. God has provided Abraham the ram so that Isaac would not be sacrificed. The angel of the Lord calls to Abraham in verse 11. And as I have said before in one of my Bible reading videos, I believe that the angel of the Lord is Jesus Christ and that the angel is God's son. So here we get to see what I like to believe is Jesus talking to Abraham about a similar sacrifice to what the angel will eventually have to face. We get to see him say, uh, here. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. In a similar way that God didn't withhold the angel from us. And yeah, I do want to point out there again, you have not withheld your son, your only son. Verse 14, so Abraham called the name of that place the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. So, this is just like a call to us, I believe, that we must have faith that the Lord will provide when we are in times of need. Verse 18, and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Here we see that God is blessing Abraham for his obedience, something that God will do for us if we are obedient to God. And we must always remember that because as a Christian, we might realize, well, as a Christian, we live a more difficult life. We have to resist our flesh. We have to die to our flesh. We need to destroy our own will and listen purely to God's will. We need to have complete obedience in order to follow the example set before us by Christ. And that is a difficult thing to do in a world where, where we're so used to being self-dependent. But when we are obedient to God, when we are dependent on God, He blesses us. He, he will provide and He will give generously to us for our obedience. I also just want to go back to verse 8. God will provide for himself the lamb. 
again, another pre-telling of the crucifixion of Jesus. And I find it interesting that that prophecy, that, that action of love that God has given to us by sacrificing his one and only son, it is pre-told in Genesis. It is pre-told from very early on. Well, it's foretold. I think that's the correct word for it. But it's interesting how that has been a very consistent thing in the Old Testament. I mean, I haven't read through the full Old Testament yet, but from what I've heard, that is like the story of Christ is very much foretold in the Old Testament. And it's just interesting that it's foretold even as far back as Genesis. Even back in the days of Abraham. So yeah, I think that's everything I have to say today. So, thank you for watching. Keep running when no one else is, and have a blessed day.